Good morning from a very, very, very important place in Rio. Today we're going to visit a favela, Hacinha favela, which is, I would say, even known internationally. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, favela in Brazil and Rio in South America. So we're super excited. We have booked a tour with our good friend, Guilherme. He speaks English. I will also write his handle, Instagram handle, also at the bottom of the screen. So if you're here and if you're lucky like us that at the same time he is also in Rio, you can definitely book a tour with him. We are super excited and the first order of business is... Motorbikes. Riding motorbikes. Get, get ready. Mariana, are you ready? <laughs> so the VIP is for her and I get on back of this one. Let's go. So Mariana, how was your first experience on a bike? Very nice. <laughs> that was amazing. How was experience? Amazing, amazing. My God, sweet. I love it. Really, really nice. We got. So we are on top of a hill where. 
you can actually see the city down there and we are going to start the tour so where we are here which is like a viewpoint that our guide brought us because we can see exactly what is down there this favela Hasinga is actually in the middle of two or three very very expensive if not the most expensive neighborhoods in Rio down there by the water it's the Leblon uh, neighborhood this one is Gavia and on the other side there is the other neighborhood San Conjado that uh, I read online that these neighborhoods they have the highest property taxes actually in Rio so in the middle of all of these uh, neighborhoods there's this hill where the favela of Hosing is made but as you can see down there these are all um, big houses uh, big apartment buildings of those nice neighborhoods and then right here you have the favela and as you saw us uh, coming up with the bikes Hosing uh, the word comes uh, from the word Hossa in Portuguese which means a ranch but apparently in the early 20th century there used to be actually a ranch here and then little by little people came and they took over and poor people came here and they built houses majority of the houses here don't have a permit they were just built like that but not because people just wanted to break the rules no it's just because they didn't have money they were poor so they just came here and they built a house just to have a house also it's uh, worth mentioning that in the whole Rio there is over seven or eight hundred different favelas in the state of Rio de Janeiro it could be over a thousand and in the whole Brazil it could be six thousand five hundred or more favelas and right now in the favela of Hasinga there are they could, you could say it's even more than 300,000 people that live in this favela. We're now going to start our uh, walk because basically the tour is a walking tour of the favela and as we're walking he's going to explain everything to us. Uh, there will be some uh, parts that he, as he explained we cannot film uh, for obvious reasons but um, we wanted to come here I have to say to show the reality of the life of people also because unfortunately everything we hear in the media about the favelas and these places is just bad things yes there is crime there is drugs there is all of that but we wanted to show this also to show that uh, no people are just going through their life on daily life uh, everything happens people are living here families kids so it's part of life and it is definitely part of visiting Rio de Janeiro. If you come to Rio, yes, there are beautiful places, beaches and all of that, but favelas are also part of the culture of the city. And it is good to be here and to learn about this. Um, our guide was actually mentioning that around 25% of the population of the city, they actually live inside favelas. So one out of every four people, so we really felt it is very important to mention this and to show this also. So another interesting fact about the favela is it's always also expanding, it's always growing as you can see. They cannot grow to the side anymore so they go up. More interesting facts, most of the people don't have an address in the favela. There are no traffic lights and also electricity. There are certain things that people don't pay for, like electricity, nobody pays for it. Water is provided, but people don't really pay for it. Another thing is, because there isn't that much infrastructure provided by the city, and like electricity, mostly they just take it, um, there is no property taxes, which in Brazil is IPTU or IPTU. 
which in the other three neighborhoods that are the neighboring neighborhoods of Pasinga, they pay the highest property taxes. But inside the favela, they don't pay it. And that's why now apparently it has become a trick that some companies, they actually register their office inside the favela so they don't pay taxes. There's always ways to <laughs> get around things. And for traffic, as you can see, there's no traffic light, but people manage it with amongst themselves. They give each other the yield of the road, so it moves. Here I can still film. We just went through a valley that we could not film. Uh, it's so interesting, there are wires hanging from everywhere, there are little alleys on the side. Very, very interesting uh, to experience and to go through all of these streets. But um, unfortunately, at least here, we couldn't film. Another thing very interesting is that there are more than 7,000 businesses in the favela, in this favela, and they are mostly open 24-7. They don't close. And there are a lot of people that they learned how to do it. Let's say there's even a sushi restaurant here. So they were working in a sushi restaurant and then they came here and they opened their own restaurant here. And also there is no map. So like the alley that we went through was Hua Un, like uh, street number one. And then you know through that you will have access to different parts of the favela that uh, you will know depending on where you live. Like right on the side here, it's all of these houses. And our guide brought us here because there is a surprise. Check this out. This is kind of like a... Kind of like a gate that you see on top you're right in the heart of the favela as you can see we're on top i don't know if in the distance you guys can see or not but there is like a little like curved uh, piece of concrete there that's where we met our guide down there it's like a walk path for people to cross the street that's where we met then we took the bikes we went above here and we walked through the alley to come here it is really interesting, no? My God, I, um, I, I'm lost for words. It's so interesting, so many different things to see, so many contrasts and uh, extremes. Like down below you see nice expensive houses. Here you see little houses just built on top of each other, stacked actually on top of each other, but Despite all of that, it's kind of like an organized chaos. Everything works, life is going on, people have electricity, internet, water. It's very, very interesting. The gentleman here is 94 years old, believe it or not. And Mariana is trying to have a conversation with him. Unfortunately, he doesn't hear properly, you have to yell, but 94 years old, my God. I would just kill to live up to 94. So now we are in another alley that it's uh, much, much more relaxed and we can actually film. All of the graffiti here is done by a local artist that first started here and now apparently he even goes around the world and paints. I don't know if I mentioned earlier or not, but one of our early, early, early videos from the time that we were not even planning to do YouTube, we did a tour of another favela in Colombia, in Medellin, Comuna 13. 
and uh, it's a mix of pictures, uh, slideshows and videos. Um, but I'm gonna put the link in the description and also on the screen for you guys to watch it. It's very interesting. Again, it's not as good as the videos that we create now because now we have a professional camera and back then we were just filming for ourselves with the cell phone. But it's very interesting, gives you a very, very good idea about that uh, country and that city also that they have kind of the same concept of uh, favela. Yeah. Also another thing that is very interesting is because there isn't a set address for all the residents we just walked through an alley and our guide was saying usually there is a box here with letters so everybody uses the address of a shop that is down there on the main street and they receive all the mail for everybody that lives from here on and they leave the letters here in a box so People will come, go through the letters, find their own letters, and take it. But because not everybody has an address, everybody shares and has the address of this store on the corner. And the store receives all the mail, and everybody will just come and take theirs. walking down another alley to just go a bit lower because that's the tour we're gonna to walk through these alleys and go down to the same level that uh, where we started the tour oh and the boxes that I mentioned for the mail this is one example that everybody probably uses the address of this house because as you can see it has a number and then when they receive the mail they leave it here and people come and go through the mail and take theirs. It might be chaotic, but it is organized chaos. So another interesting thing is that even in the favela, you have uh, different levels. The higher you go, believe it or not, it's actually cheaper and it's not considered as nice as the lower levels of the favela. The lower levels of the favela are actually more expensive. Why? because they are at the bottom and at the bottom you're closer to all of the services uh, transportation the beach and everything else so the lower you are in the favela more expensive it is actually the average salary here for people is a thousand four hundred reais and our guide was explaining that um, at the lower level just like to rent like a one apartment, which is just like one room, but a big room, it could cost you around a thousand reais. So even in the favelas, uh, even though historically only poor people used to live there, now even to live at the lower level of the favela is not that cheap anymore because other parts became also very expensive. Let me just turn the camera and show you where we are. This is somebody's house, basically. Uh, you see the stairs going down. This is somebody else's roof. It's very interesting. And also, all of the favelas, they have something called an association. 
So basically the association acts like a body that connects the government with the people. Like a lot of people don't have an address. They could receive mail, but like let's say if you want an official letter to open a bank account or to do anything with a document, the association will provide you a letter that is kind of like a proof of address so you can obtain the services that you need. Now we are going lower and lower again, getting closer to the bottom. Also there is police present, but even the police, they stay only at the lower levels. They don't go completely up. If you haven't watched the movie, there is a very, very nice movie, Brazilian movie. In English, it translates to the elite squad or in Portuguese, Tropa de Elite. That movie is basically about the uh, commandos, I would say, or rangers that are part of the branch of the military police in Brazil. They are trained special forces like elite force that they are the only ones who go inside and clean up. Hola, dia. And they clean up. So that movie is also very interesting to watch. One thing I wanted to note also, it's extremely loud. So I hope sound quality is good because it's really busy and extremely loud. So the favela is basically like a city for itself and they have everything. They have built a hospital, community center, sports centers, and they also have churches, obviously, Brazil being a Catholic uh, country. And this church is the first one. It was built during 1940s because Hosenia itself, originally it started in the 1920s. Uh, and then after that, it started coming bigger and bigger and bigger and this church was built in the 1940s. Um, one more thing I wanted to mention about the cost of living in the lower level of the favela. Our guide was explaining that it's, it's not that cheap and one example is that at some point uh, a few months uh, ago he saw a house that was two floors with a rooftop and all of that but at the lower level of the favela and it was for sale for 300,000 reais. So you would think in the favela the rent is cheap or the cost of living is cheap, but no, Rio being Rio, even in the favela, if you want to buy a house or if you want to rent, it's not as cheap as you might think. As you get to the lower levels, as you can see, there is also much more uh, commerce happening and activity, and the roads are also much wider. As you get higher in the favela, the roads become much, much narrower. Access is very hard. And even like to take a fridge up there, you have to hire people to carry the fridge for you through the very tight alleys. Here, no. And that's why the lower part of the favela is also more expensive to live in. We're now gonna go inside an alley again. But, um, here too, at some point I should put the camera away.
So we are back at the street level, at the bottom, uh, where we started the tour. And this is what they call the popular market. Basically, it's a market that you can find everything, from clothes to electronics to all kinds of things. And it is much cheaper, apparently, to shop here than other parts of the city. So this place is huge. You basically cannot even like, see the end. Oh, finally, I can see the street at the end, but it's huge. And it goes to the other side too. There's two roads that you can walk, but you can basically find everything here. It's a little bit chaotic, but just to show you, right behind me, there is also a metro station. So at the bottom of the favela, you also have a metro station. There are buses and taxis that you can take and that's why it's more popular to live at a lower level and in the distance if you can see on top that's where the other part of the favela is and all around we were basically over there somewhere on the top okay this ends our amazing tour of the Hosinga favela which is right over there behind us and interestingly enough, I must mention, right across this street, apparently from just over there, this is a very nice neighborhood. So as you can see, just this street... Actually, actually it's the most expensive neighborhood in Rio. <laughs> yeah, so just this street divides the favela from a very nice and trendy neighborhood. But again, this is Rio. This is Brazil. Actually, this is Brazil. Extremes. But we loved everything. Our tour guide, uh, Guillaume, was amazing. Explained so many things to us. Knew the whole favela like the palm of his hand. My God, all of these alleys that we went through. I was like, does he know where he's going? <laughs> everything. Amazing. So this is one more video from Rio. We're not done. There will be at least one or two more videos coming up. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a like to help the rating of the video. And we will see you in the next one. Bye. Ciao.